Hey everybody, welcome back to Photorec.tv. I'm Toby and I'm back from a month of travel and just in time because today, or when you're watching this recently, Adobe has announced at Adobe Max big changes, big updates to Photoshop and Lightroom. Photoshop even has a new app, although I'm not quite sure why these changes don't seem that big. And in Lightroom, unlike the legs request for the metaverse, this feature requests is right at the very top of the list and Adobe has finally given it to us but it's still not that good Photoshop new app when you go to update through the creative cloud you actually see the old Photoshop that has an update as well and a new Photoshop we're up to Photoshop 2023 with a version 24. It's a little confusing, but that's how it is. Why do we have two versions now? Well, they want to make sure that you, the professional that requires, relies heavily on Photoshop, that you can still access all of your plugins and all of the features that you are used to and that you know work and you have dialed in. And you kind of slowly migrate over to the new version of Photoshop as the developers update their plugins as you kind of learn how it all works. I've, I've noticed a few kind of workspace bugs as I've just played around with Photoshop 2023 today. So there are certainly some bugs and we'll see some updates in the future. If you don't need the old version, you know that this isn't a program you're requiring every day and it's not critical to your workflow, then you can certainly on installing ask it to uninstall the old version, which keeps things a little bit less, uh, keeps things a little bit more straightforward and less confusing. You do want to make sure whenever you are editing in Photoshop from Lightroom that you are moving into the 2023 Photoshop, not the old one. Now Lightroom got an update as well. It is not a new app, but you are prompted to upgrade your catalog when you first install. And this is a great time to take a moment and make sure your catalog has a nice succinct name and is not V10, V11, V12 uh, with all of the upgraded catalogs over the, the years. So this will create for you a new upgraded catalog, leaving an old catalog behind. And, and in many ways, similar to Photoshop, if you find after a few days that everything is working correctly, nothing's gone wrong, you can certainly delete that old catalog or at least move it off to some other non-working drive uh, because you should no longer need that. You have an upgraded catalog that is everything that the old catalog was, but better, I guess, right? Because it offers new features that are part of this new version of Lightroom. So what is new in Lightroom? Well, back last year, almost exactly a year ago, and it does feel like these updates have been much more significant in the last couple of years and much more frequent. I'm saying good job, Adobe, for the most part. Last year, we got the update that allowed masking, which you know was kind of an update to the local area adjustments, all under the little mask tool. Well, now when you click that, let me get rid of this mask real quick so that we see what you see in the new masking panel is we have subject, we had that before. We have sky, we had that before. And now we have background, that's new, all right? And if you notice, while I've been blabbing, down below, it's found people in this and it's highlighted and masked all of these people and taken our little faces, there's me, person seven, and put them as a little mask icons that we can click. This is pretty powerful. This is nice. This is automatic. And this is also going to be a place where this really separates your kind of slower, older machines from your newer, more powerful ones. We can click all people. And then we get a subset within that where we can actually say, hey, I need masks on all the faces. Maybe the white balance and the skin tones is off a little bit and I need to adjust that independently of the rest of the image. Even better, because you don't wanna just adjust the faces and then have the hands totally different color. That's like when somebody goes to a spray tan booth and they forget to do part of their body. So you can click face skin, body skin. It's a little creepy, those terms, but that's what you can do. You can even do eyebrows, lips, and hair in this. Now, 
we are a bit further away in this image, but I'll show you in a second how you can take this even to the next level. So after you decide, let's just say entire person in this example, we say create mask. And now we're into the traditional masking panel with all of the people masked. If you want to create additional masks, of course, you click the create new mask and we have select subject here again. And now we do have the option for selecting people. It's listed here. There's no automatic people list and we've gone away from that individual uh, page but we can go to select people and then boom, we're right back in here. And so if I wanted to select myself individually from all of the rest, then we could do that. And let's say create mask. And of course, it's always a good idea to double click. Let's just call this Toby mask. because That's what it is. Let's just call this group. This was my small Iceland workshop uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So now within the mask, you also have select sky, We've had that before. I have another masking video that talks about this in detail and gives you free presets that you can use, adaptive presets that use these AI features and AI masking automatically. So look for that link right down below. But now you can be lazy. You don't even have to say select subject and then invert. You can just ask it straight up to find the background. And it's going to say, hey, here are the people slash subjects in this image. Let me flip that around and get the background. So you could do simple, something simple like darken it just a little bit, maybe drop the texture and clarity just a little bit to make your subjects pop and stand out. That's pretty nifty. Now we're gonna move on and look in a little bit more detail on this people masking option. So here we go. We've got a shot of Steve holding a little bit of ice back in January in Antarctica. So let's go back into the select people. It's going to find our person, Steve. There he is, outlines in red. And look, it does a nice job. It even recognizes that he is holding something that is not part of him and probably I don't want to adjust. But now when I click Steve's little thumbnail here, I have, of course, the face skin we saw before. And yes, that's incredibly creepy. Uh, we have the eyebrows. We have the eye sclera. I didn't say that completely correctly, but that's the whites of the eyes. Do you see what's happening there? Let's uh, zoom in because it's just so amazingly creepy and fun at the same time. There it is. So automatically Lightroom is recognizing that and you can set up a mask because of course you might want to whiten those areas just a little bit, or you can select just the iris and pupil. And of course we've got lips and teeth and, oh man, it's, Steve and I are good friends, love him to death. He's a fantastic photographer. And so, uh, yeah, that's just, um, just, <laughs> okay, moving on. So really, really powerful automatic masking. This has been uh, a feature, the automatic masking for a year, and now it's dialed into the level where Lightroom can find for you these individual facial, facial features and allow you to make changes to them. And that is just really, really impressive. Now it doesn't always find people on this one I just tried. Here's uh, Pete from our Arctic trip telling us all to be very quiet so we could sneak up on some musk ox and no people are found. So you can fall back in that case to the select subject, which it still uses a person icon for that, I guess, all right? And in this case, it decides that that's Pete and uh, also includes the rock uh, there uh, between his legs. And I guess, you know, he's in kind of a strange position uh, so it doesn't automatically really recognize that as a person. But then, of course, you can do your edits to it. You cannot do all of that additional fancy features like pupils and sclera and lips and teeth and like that because it doesn't recognize him as a person. So just something to keep in mind. Now, there's one new additional feature to the masking panel. Let's pop over here to uh, this Kirkafell image. And it was, a, it was pretty nice conditions. We had a real rainbow. We had some side lighting sun that was soft, but we had this cloud that was just blocking the light from the top of Kirkafell. So you can see I've got a couple of uh, masks there already. Let's just uh, delete all masks and start from scratch here. So I don't want subject sky or background. I want objects. This is new objects. When you click objects, you have two modes. You have a paintbrush mode and you have the rectangle mode. 
I think they're pretty self-explanatory, but I'm going to I'm going to show you both. The paintbrush mode allows you to brush on what you want it to select. I want to work on the top of that mountain kind of independently of the rest of the image to try to just soften that shadow a little bit. So I've painted up there very sloppily, I might add, and now I'm going to let go and it's going to look at where I painted, find the boundaries and geez, in this case, I mean, just really, really nice job. Maybe actually it did a little bit too much. So let's undo and let me try object brush again. And I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller and I use the bracket keys to make it a little smaller. And I'm just going to kind of just grab the top. There we go. Now it even is really kind of following that shadow line. And so of course I can then just up exposure a little bit, shadows a little bit. I don't want it to get too HDR looking and uh, maybe just warm it up a little, which kind of uh, pushes that shadow back just a little bit. Now, how is the other object selection work? Let's real, look real quick. Objects. Now choose rectangle. And this is very similar to Photoshop. And we'll look at this in a minute. It allows you to draw a rectangle around your object. And then it decides what that object is within the rectangle. And your end result is very, very similar. It's just two different ways to get to that. So if you can easily and quickly draw a rectangle around your object, that's the method I'd go. If your object is a little bit more irregular and maybe kind of interlaced with something else, I think the paintbrush is going to do you a little bit better. All right, we want to move on. We're not talking about subject selection or masking at all anymore. We're talking about the new feature that has been added to Lightroom that we are so excited about and is better, but not that exciting. And that is under the healing tool, Q on the menu or Q on the keyboard. You have the originals, clone and heal, basically stamp tools that just really aren't very good. But now you have a content aware remove. So we have this small fence line keeping this Icelandic course in this beach area. We want to remove it. So I'm just going to draw a line along that fence line. It's going to analyze for a moment and remove it. In this case, it did a pretty decent job. If you don't love what it does in the old days, in the old method, it would automatically sample from someplace else and you could adjust that sample location. You don't have that now, but you can ask it to reanalyze by right clicking on it and saying select new source. Keyboard shortcut for that is the forward slash. So let's just do that one time. It's going to analyze again and then kind of give us an updated look. And I think that one is just fine as well. Now, if we look back here, we have another one of these lines coming right out of the top of the horse's kind of snout. And I'm going to make my brush size smaller. And I'm going to draw right along there. And in the past with the old method, that would be quite challenging. That seam, that very noticeable seam that is the white of the muzzle of the horse to the background. And you can see here, it's done a very nice job with that. And we don't have to do any of pulling from someplace else. We also have a little person back here, just kind of going to quickly erase them. And I think that might be a little bit rougher, but when we zoom back out, it's going to be good enough that I'm happy. One tip here, have your tool overlay set to auto. That makes it very easy for those white outlines on the tool to go away after you mouse off, making it much easier to tell whether or not it did a good job. If you have them on always or selected, those tools, those outlines stay there, and then it's harder to tell how natural of a job it did. So pretty happy with that. I don't see any real reason to use these other tools now, but let's give it a little bit more of a challenging uh, time here at Skogafoss. I'm walking back towards the camera and uh, let's just see how it does with me here in this case. And you know that, let's turn it back to auto, that is pretty bad. So let's click on that forward slash key and ask it to do it again. Not good. Let's try one more time. 
Not good. So this is what I'm talking about. One more time, Lightroom. One more time. Nope. It's not good. Sorry. So let's move on and look at one more example where I think this is pretty challenging because this, let's, let's take Tom and his red jacket out of here. Um, and I'm going to make my bra a little bit bigger and then I'm just going to draw over Tom right here and done. And it's going to analyze for a moment. And you know what? Except for this little bit of ghost of Tom here, Tom's leg, it has done a quite a nice job, I think. So in this case, instead of just asking it to re redraw, I'm just going to come in here, start drawing just outside of the tools boundaries prior and draw there. You can't draw on top of the tool. So that's why you have to start just outside and try again. And that is pretty impressive. So there are times where this tool now is much improved, but I think we're going to run into a fair number of examples like this, where you're still just going to be better off moving to Photoshop. Talking about Photoshop, let's jump over to Photoshop and talk about the tools that we have available to us there. So let me undo this. And let's go edit in. And as I said, you want to make sure it says Photoshop 2023. That's the new Photoshop that you want to be launching. And of course, you get the new splash screen or image there. All right, so the big update to Photoshop is the object select tool is supposed to be much smarter. So I'm already in the object select tool. It's the W key on the keyboard. And what that means is when you just mouse over, it's going to automatically decide things in the image that you might want to select. For instance, me. So I can click me. Now, I did not notice that prior to this version, this was here where you could ask it to select subject on the device or which gives you quick results. So using your computer's brain or in the cloud, which may give it slightly better results. I would say anytime you've selected an object and it doesn't give you quite what you want and you have a good fast internet connection, go ahead and switch it to the cloud and try and see if it does a little bit better. In a few examples I ran, the cloud definitely beat out the device as you might expect. And as it tells us there, there's going to be more detail. So now that I have selected me, I want to get rid of me. And this is another new feature in Lightroom. Shift delete is going to automatically delete that subject and replace it with content aware fill. No dialogue necessary. You're just gone. And in this case, did an okay job. When you zoom in, you start to notice though, this blur here and this blur here and this blur here. So again, they still, these features are getting there, but not quite as good as if you took the time, maybe with a clone stamp tool to sample over here and then paint in a little bit, sample over here, paint in a little bit. See, that's the key, Do little bits at a time and maybe over here and just kind of match that up just a little bit and zero. There. So that probably would have been faster for me to do in the beginning, but it's not always going to be that way. And so these tools allowing you to do quick object selection and quick delete is pretty nice. The masking is supposed to be even more refined. Let's take another example here of our uh, Mr. Icelandic pony. Let's go back over and edit that in Photoshop. All right, we've loaded that up in Photoshop. Let's go again to our object select tool. Try this out. It's done a pretty nice job. You can see it's missing some of the hair. And there's a couple of different ways that you can add in hair. Um, probably the easiest, just get your lasso tool and just kind of lasso around a little bit of that. I'm holding down the shift key so that it will add that in. Now you can press the select and mask tool. And then within here, you can hit the refine hair. It's going to be smart enough to look for the hair and delete the background. So again, I can hit that again and again, and each time it kind of improves. And you may reach a point at which you're starting to lose some objects that you want, but certainly can be a pretty useful way to do things. And then of course I can put that on its own layer and let's see how it did. That was Command J or Control Command J that put it on its own layer. You can see there's a little bit there and down in here as well. But overall, it did a pretty nice job of this longer hair that was sticking up 
of removing the background from that, which is pretty nifty. The last feature I want to show you in Photoshop, it's pretty nifty. It involves my parents' wedding photo or one of the wedding photos. So there are these neural filters. They've been around for a while. Photoshop has been slowly adding to them. One of the new ones in Photoshop 2023 is photo restoration. It's a beta and the first time that you want to run it, you do have to click the little cloud icon to download that filter into Photoshop's brain, but then it's there. Once it's there, you can turn it on and it enhances the photo, enhances faces, and will off also reduce the scratches and kind of dust spots in the image. Now, you can see the change it made, it added contrast, it really added some nice detail to my parents' face. And yes, yes, please, let's talk for just a moment. No, not really, about the mustard colored suit. Who thought that was a good idea, dad? All right, anyway, uh, let's bump up the scratch reduction. I played with this earlier and when it got to too high a level, it actually erased part of my dad's uh, smile. So it's not perfect. You have some additional adjustments in noise reduction, color reduction. I've played with these. They uh, made it worse in my opinion. So this is, as it says, a beta filter, but I have been pretty impressed with what it can do here with just a couple of clicks. There it is. And I'm going to actually output this to a new layer. So it's going to be sitting on top of the original. So I have the background, which was the scratched up one and the updated. And now of course we can zoom in a little bit and see that there's still some scratches and some tears and there's also a fold in this image, but we can turn that off. There's the original. There's the new. That's pretty impressive. And this is just the very beginning. What is this going to look like in just another couple of months or years? It's, it's impressive stuff. All right. I got a bunch of other videos masking. As I said, the presets, those are all linked down below. Those are free to watch. You can find those there. If you like my teaching style and the information I'm sharing with you, you could consider joining Penn, which is an awesome community of photographers, all, all different abilities, all just kind of on a journey to take better pictures at whatever level. You can find out more about that at photorec.tv slash pen. And, uh, you know, follow me on one of the socials or some other thing and reach out. Let's have a conversation about these things. What do you think? Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.